Hi, welcome back to building an iOS app with C Sharp. This is module three where we set up our solution and our projects. Uh, there's no slides except for this one. I'm just going to jump straight into Xamarin Studio. Uh, this is actually the third time I've recorded this or tried to record this. Um, the first couple of times I was using QuickTime and it crashed. Uh, even though I successfully used it for the first couple of videos, it just does not like me today. So I've just gone and purchased Camtasia. Uh, hopefully I have better luck with that. Uh, just before we create the solution, I just want to explain my software stack. Um, so I'm using the latest alphabets uh, on the Xamarin channel. Go away Java. Um, so version 5.6.2. Um, you can see all my version information here. Um, you'd probably be fine running the beta channel, or maybe even stable. Um, it's just that over over my you know, past year or so that I've been using Xamarin Studio, I've run into a lot of issues, and I started off on the on the stable channel, and then moved to the beta to try and fix some of those issues, and then eventually I just moved to the alpha because I had to, um, and I've not gone back since. Um, so that's what I'm using. Um, I'm also running iOS 8 on my um, iPad. Um, recently updated, of course, from iOS 7. Should be fine on either. But again, just so you know, that's what I'm using. All right, so let's create a new solution. Um, workout watch. I have already cloned my GitHub repo, of course, so um, I'm going to stick it in a SRC directory. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to create another directory. I have no way of disabling this. I don't know why. It's very annoying. So let's save this, close the solution, go and fix this so we don't have that extra directory, and then open it again. Right, so what I'm going to do is add each of the projects that we know we're going to need. Um, normally, of course, I wouldn't do this straight up. I would wait until I needed them. But I just think this is going to make it easier to record the series if I do this all at once. So I'm going to work from the bottom up. I'm going to start with our utility project. Which is portable, of course. Delete this unnecessary class. And one thing I want in all my projects is a shared assembly info file so that we can have stuff like version and what have you in one spot instead of scattered all over the place. So I'm just going to create a new file, call it shared assembly info.cs. I'm not going to add it to a project. I'm just going to save this in the same directory as the um, solution, so src. And let's edit this to have the contents that we want. Actually, let's not do that yet. Let's close it, add it to our utility project as a linked file. Stick it in our properties directory. Now let's edit it. And that's it really, that's all we need. We've got our version which I've set to 0.0.1 .0 for now. Most of this stuff I'm just going to leave blank. We can, I mean the advantage is we can go back and set it once if we need to instead of all over our projects. Um, and I've also got this which helps us um, give the correct configuration to our assemblies depending on whether we're building debug or release. Now because we've got that we don't need most of this stuff in our assembly info, we just need the the stuff that's actually different to that, which is those two items there. I'm not going to bother with the description, I'll just leave it in there in case we want to add it later. And that's the same, basically the process I'm going to use on every project that we're aware of. So the next one would be services. Um, you may recall from our architecture video, I wasn't sure whether I was going to split the services from their contracts. I've decided that I am going to do that just to keep a nice clean separation. 
So this um, contracts assembly will only have the interfaces for our services. Next up is the actual implementation of the services. Uh, should I say the implementation of the portable services. Now we know we're going to need at least some uh, iOS specific services. I'm going to use the classic API. I'll explain why, why that is um, when I get to the uh, to the UI project. But all we need is a library project. We'll call it services.ios. There, so that will contain any services that are specific to the platform. And you can imagine if we had Android support, we'd need a workoutwatch.services.android as well. Okay, next up, we are on to the models, uh, which we need to make sure is portable. And next up, the view models. Um, you'll recall I wasn't sure whether I was going to split the tests from the test harness as well in, um, in the architecture video that I did. Again, I've decided to do that just to make things cleaner. So we are going to have a portable workoutwatch.unit tests assembly. This will just make things easier later on if we need to run our tests on Android or whatever. And it's you know it's just good practice to to be uh, clear about what's portable and what's not. All right, so that's it for the um, platform agnostic code. Um, the only thing that's not agnostic there, of course, is this uh, iOS services. Now the next thing we're going to need is an actual user interface uh, project for our views. Now I mentioned I, I was using Classic API versus Unified. Unified is a fairly new thing. Um, it makes the interface or the API uh, between iOS and Mac, um, if not exactly the same, then very similar. I think it's exactly the same. I, I haven't looked into it exactly, but um, I've tried using it in another project and I just ran into issues with third party uh, NuGets that didn't support the unified API. So I'm going to use classic because I know it works. Um, and I also know that it's quite easy to upgrade from the classic to the unified because that's actually how I tried to do it uh, in my other project. Um, so we can always do that later if we find that all our dependencies work with the Unified API at some point. Um, I'm going to go universal. We're not specific to iPad or iPhone with this application. And I'm just going to do an empty project. Um, I, I was pondering whether to do Xamarin Forms. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that, at least initially. We may come back and do that later. Um, I'd, I'd rather just do... Uh, a straight iOS, you know, traditional iOS app first, um, and we can we can always look at Xamarin Forms later if if you know time permits. So we're gonna work out watch .ui .ios. There we go. And last project we'll need. Oops, hang on, I didn't do the properties. And it's interesting that it doesn't actually create 
properties for you in an iOS um, assembly. I guess that's because they're not needed at all. I don't really know, but I'm just going to add mine anyway. Because they might be stripped out of the, the platform binary. But we'll add this. We've got it. We may as well use it. And the last project we need is the unit test harness, which is also going to run on iOS. So I'm going to call this workout watch dot UI dot test harness. And again with the properties. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the project set. I'll just make sure that builds. And it does. Uh, the other thing I wanted to make sure of here is that we can actually run our unit test project and, you know, actually see a test run. That would be nice. So let's set that as a startup. Obviously, this is going to need to reference our tests, which I can't see. Where are they? Sorry, couldn't see it. Forest for the trees. All right, so what do we need to do? Oh, the other thing I need to mention: um, unit testing on in Xamarin for iOS is a bit of a mess, um, in my experience. You will find this file new. Oh, let's do it this way. Add new project. Uh, where is it? iOS unit test project. However, uh, this uses a version of. Oh no, I've lost my link. Uh, let me find it. Okay, found it. I'm just going to drag it over. So, as I understand it, um, Xamarin Studio is using this project by Sebastian Apulio. I'm sorry if I'm murdering your name there, Sebastian. Um, touch.unit, which is basically nUnit um, light, nUnit light that runs on iOS. Um, however, I ran into some problems with async testing. Um, specifically, it it was doing a, a, it was waiting on tasks instead of awaiting, um, so it was blocking in certain scenarios. So what I did was fork that, um, did my own commit to to hack in a fix for that. Um, it's not pretty, but it works. Um, and I've pre-built that and stuck it in our lib directory here, and unit light DLL. Um, so what we need to do is reference that from our unit test harness. I've selected the wrong one, haven't I? Did I add the reference to the wrong one as well? Of course I did. Pressures of screen recordings. Why can I not set that as my startup? I've probably added the wrong kind of project, did I? No. Yes, definitely. Let me delete this. Yes, just delete everything. Do it. Alright, let's try that again. Sorry about this. Add new project. Universal empty project. This is what happens when you try and talk and code at the same time. That's my excuse anyway. UI.test harness. That looks better. So we should be able to set that as a startup, yes. And we need to reference our unit test. And as I just explained, we need to reference in unit light. Righto. Okay, and the way this works is we need to um, bootstrap the in unit light runner from our app delegate. So what we're going to do is declare a touch runner here, which is a type from the, um, of course, from the in unit light uh, assembly. This is the actual test runner. So just import that. And we'll create a new one of them. We need to give it the window to run in. 
let's get rid of this. We need to tell it what um, what tests to run. Uh, we don't have any tests to run yet, so let's just quickly chuck something into our unit test project. Dummy test, which of course needs to reference the same assembly. And I must admit, I don't understand why this works, but it does. Let me explain. Uh, workout watch lib and unit light. I can add a uh, add a reference to this, which is not a portable uh, not a portable library. But it seems that if I'm only using the portable pieces, then it works. Or maybe I'm just being stupid and there's something else going on here. But whatever the case, there we go. So here's our dummy test. This is make a fail. Alright, so we've got a test. We can tell our runner to use the sem the assembly that houses that test. So we'll just do this. Uh, I might need to import that if it lets me, which it's not at the moment. Okay, and then, whoops. Use a new uh, navigation control as our root view, and use the touch runners uh, view controller inside that navigation controller, and that should allow us to run our stupid test. Let's try that. I'm just running in the simulator here. Hopefully, it starts up on this screen. If not, no. Nope. I'm going to drag it over. Here we go. So we're starting up. Slowly. Yay. So we can see our unit test, yeah, single test, dummy test will fail because surprisingly true is not false. So we are good. We've got what we need, I think, for this video. Um, yeah. So next time we will actually get into some code. So I look forward to catching you then. See ya.